I think British Columbia's election finance laws are far too loose. I think their uh, potential for abuse of the electoral system is very large given how loose our election laws are. Uh, we do not discriminate between organizations and individuals. So organizations that don't have a right to vote uh, can still contribute to the political process and I don't believe for a second uh, that either corporations or unions donate money without an explicit understanding that that money is going to buy them access and is going to buy them influence. It just makes no sense to me that anybody would suggest uh, that an organization is going to cut tens of thousands of dollars and in cases hundreds of thousands of dollars to a political entity without any expectation of return. I think it's silly to suggest otherwise. So the fact that we allow organizations to donate when other jurisdictions, Canada and other provinces, have stopped that for quite some time. Secondly, I think the fact that non-residents can donate uh, distorts the system because it's British Columbians that uh, are electing the government. It's British Columbians that are impacted by what that government does. It's British Columbia's resources uh, that are being developed by that government and to allow non-residents to be able to vote uh, uh, with their money uh, then I think that that's just wrong and that needs to be stopped as well. It's a distortion of the system. And then finally, the fact that you can get some small amount of anonymous, anonymous donors, but you get anonymity through numbered companies being able to donate uh, to British Columbia's parties. I think, again, that's wrong because you can't connect uh, the money to the person and understand what the objective of the donation is. The easiest way to stop all of that, and I've put a uh, legislation in front of the BC legislature, is to simply say only a certain class of individuals has a right to donate to political parties, and that's registered voters. If you don't register to vote, if you don't have a right to vote, you don't have a right to donate. Because the fundamental principle of democracy is one person one vote and in order to respect that you have to say okay the person who has registered with the right to vote is the only person who therefore is allowed to actually donate to the system uh, that gives them the choices of who to vote for and supports the democratic system. So I've said uh, take it to that level, it's registered voters only, registered voters are the only ones that can donate and they can only donate to a maximum of a thousand dollars per year and the reason for that maximum is because I could still distort the system if I'm extremely wealthy and I'm a registered voter, I can still cut a $100,000 check to a political party, whereas someone who's living on the poverty line can't match that donation. So stop that. I think $1,000 is a reasonable amount. What that will do, in my mind anyway, what that will do is force political parties to connect to the voters. It will force political parties to actually get people to register to vote and, and participate by voting, which is the most important thing. Not the donations, but the fact that more people vote and more people make a deliberate choice about what representative they want uh, to send to Victoria and what government they want to represent them. The second thing that it does is it forces political parties to engage the electorate direct, directly. Not corporations, not unions, not big donors, but to get right down on the ground, to get to the voters and to say what is it that you want from your government and then reflect that in their platforms and reflect that in how they govern. It's a direct tie between the person's right to vote and the person's right to contribute that I think restores our democracy at a very fundamental level.